one of the places that you can really see the advantages and the power of elliptical and figure eight striking is when we start to address the notion of infiltrating somebody's protective stance. Um, using these strikes, we can often think of sort of hacking our way up the body, almost like you have a machete carving your path through the jungle. So I have Danny here now with some basic gloves on. Basic things to look at. If we're attacking the fist itself, it suffices to just tap it and to get comfortable touching it so that we feel what our distance is. And again, it's the same mechanics as you would use for that finger whip or that palm wedge. I can, just, I can just address it to feel my range. When I'm comfortable enough, I can start to look at how I can generate power. We'll see later, even on a bare knuckle, if my palm is lax, I can create tremendous power generation, start to lower that stance and let me climb through and pat it down. I can look at striking with a hammer fist, straight to the phalanges, hitting down, and again, it's all the same mechanics. I can use a slight flexion of the wrist, almost as if I had a knife and an ice pick grip and I was climbing up. The same would apply to weapons. I can use a flexion from the elbow and the tricep, where it's almost like a skiing action. It's not dropping straight, but rather a slight motion and then carrying the elbow through, almost like a train. And that sets me up to, to continue through. I can use that same elbow flexion on a lateral plane and then start to work on how I can strike, strike and, and rip through. So on the hands, these are some of our primary targets. I'll move Danny around. As we start to now look at climbing up the hand and getting into the arm, some key points to consider. I'm just going to mark out with some tape here. The first one's what's termed the radial muscle or the radial nerve. If I go in line with the thumb, the radial bone of the forearm is right here. And under that large mass of muscle, if I basically climb down just below the flexion point. Some styles will be very specific about it being two finger widths below, but what matters for us is that it's not the flexion, slightly below. Anywhere along the middle, middle, middle belly of that, of that forearm is an ideal activation point. When that bends, the second activation point for us is the lateral flexion point here in the forearm. On me, it's quite, quite visible. I have a, a target dip, which uh, doesn't serve me so well, but I want to have this right here, right outside the bulb of the muscle into this zone. So these are two primary areas that we hit. We can address that hand, hitting, striking, even patting it into an elbow. And then I start to look at how can I generate power into the forearm. Rather than striking the hard, bony surface of the forearm, I look to drop in there. And again, it's the hand with flexion from the tricep and then generated from the core. And that kind of power right away lets us dig and strike in. The lateral flexion point can be done with a hammer fist as if I'm sticking a knife into here, right? rotating over, almost like a karate inside block. But it can also be done with that Slavic hook, knuckles down, thumb down, first striking surface, driving in. Right? And as we start to work on displacing, I see that I can hammer fist or hammer fist, strike, destroy the hand, and come down. So some basic combinations, glancing up and striking with that elbow, hammer fisting down. Slavic hook into the wrist and striking down. Hooking with one hand on a figure eight. This way or this way. And as I start to feed into my wedge, going into the face, into a hammer fist, my whip into a drop, this way. So it becomes a very powerful strike. The third and the last point, if we go to the inside of the wrist, aside from radial, and lateral, we have the medial nerve, right on the inside of the forearm, which can serve us, and also another one that's sometimes used as the ulnar nerve, just above the condyle, that bony protuberance of his forearm. These can be, to a lesser extent, a good shot. Some people do like to hit that with a, a leopard paw, even the inside of the wrist. Door knocking knuckles here, that's quite good. Even a slap with a wedge can be good, but that Slavic jab, Slavic hook rather, with the thumb over, is by far the most painful. And coming up or elbowing and hooking from the back even, hooking up with those knuckles. So again, what matters is that if I can touch it, I can hit it. If I can touch it, I can guide it into an elbow. And I can feed all of those into the figure eight. Once it's comfortable, we can look at cross zoning and changing over to the other side and addressing all of those same targets on the far arm.